So, in 2020, what are the top three languages, programming languages, for the enterprise? That means for large, large companies. So, if you want to go work for large organizations, the top three languages, in no particular order, are Java, C Sharp, and Python. By the, by the way, I did another video, the top three languages for small businesses and freelancers, Python is the only language of the two lists that actually are on both lists. Okay, so why C Sharp, Java, and Python? Well, C Sharp and Java is simply because they are in place, they are entrenched, they are legacy. So already there's a ton of infrastructure in terms of software that is already being used by large organizations. And so when you have a company that has spent uh, millions of dollars, if not tens of millions of dollars, putting in software in a particular language and the software development stack, they are loath to change. They will not change. They will not change. It's just not worth it to them. So if you are attracted to the idea of working for very large businesses, if you're attracted to that idea, then you should definitely look to uh, C Sharp, Java, and Python. Now, Python is a bit of a different beast in that regard. How so? Well, with Python, it's becoming super popular in the latest uh, trend, if you were, the hot trend of machine learning and AI. A lot of companies are investing in that, small and large. And so, you're going to see Python being used in that area. Also, Python is kind of a glue language. It's a system-level language where uh, you're going to see, you see Python used to automate certain ser server processes. It could be used to uh, control how rendering engines function and scheduling tasks, all kinds of stuff. Because it's, it's kind of a, a general-purpose scotch tape type of language beyond the fact it can do web, beyond the fact it does AI and ML. So, uh, and on several lists, people are predicting that Python will be the top language uh, next, in the next couple of years. You know, I'm going to go the other way. So now that you know what the top three languages are, well, hold on. Let me give honor, honorable mention to SQL. SQL, the Structured Query Language. Some people might argue that's not a programming language. It's a 4G language. It's kind of a weird beast. It's widely used still. So if you're developing especially web apps, there's like a 98% chance you're going to be using a relational database, an SQL database. So you may not use SQL too often, but it's good to know, and you, will, you probably will use it every now and then, if not more than that. It depends on the situation. These days, ORM tools which are software layers that sit in between your app code and a database, ORM tools, for the most part, take away the need to have to write a lot of SQL. Although there are times when you're gonna to have to drop down to SQL, so it's good to know at least basic SQL. It's one of the foundational languages that I teach. So yeah, when you're choosing a career, I think this is a larger question, um, you don't just wanna look at the language, you wanna look at what environment the uh, languages exist in. That's why I talk about these lists where large corporations is Java, C, Sharp, Python, and small businesses and startups, freelance is JavaScript, PHP, and Python. Why I mention that? Because when you get into the game as a professional developer, wherever, whatever level you are at, the nature of the business is much more important than the language itself. You're gonna find that, yes, you're gonna enjoy one, you're gonna enjoy one language over another, but at the end of the day, it's the nature, that is weird. at the end of the day, you're gonna find the nature of the business is gonna be a much bigger, it's gonna have a much bigger impact in terms of how you enjoy your job or not, you know? I'm just walking around here. One of the last nice days of autumn, so when you're choosing your programming language, I would first suggest that you choose the environment in which you want to work. That's much more important. That's much more important. 
So let me close off this video. If you're a regular viewer of my videos, you probably guess the answer to these things. When I'm creating content like this, I have to make a determination, a decision about content for people new to the channel and people who have been here for a while. So that's why I always lead with the, I try anyway, to lead with the conclusion so that you don't have to wait around. Of course, like you're seeing now, if you do wait around and you listen to the stuff, then you might get some more uh, details about what's going on. So as I mentioned in a dedicated video, just in case you missed it, uh, I plan on when I get back from my trip, I'm traveling down to the southern U.S., down to Florida, and then I'm supposed to go to Texas and California, Nevada, half business, and partly for family, uh, family event. But... Um, when I do get back, I'm going to implement on that long plan of, uh, of having two series in the main YouTube channel. The two series are going to be the uh, Master Nerd Q&A, where I just answer questions, which I do often. But I'm going to structure it and make it official, if you will. And then the other series that I want to do... See, I don't like vlogging like this, but I'm trying to vlog like this to make it a little bit more, more entertaining so you can see the environment in which I live and visit. But I don't like it. I just feel conscious when people drive by, they're looking at me and say, what is this dork doing with the camera here, you know? But you got to ignore that stuff. Anyway, so, uh, so the other series is going to be the um, Nerd News, where I'm just going to go over the latest news so that you're aware of what's going on and give you my opinion about what that latest news means. How's it impact the industry? This is something to look into. If you're wondering why people want to listen to my opinion, well, I'm with you. Why would you want to listen to my opinion? Now, the real reason you want to listen to my opinion because I've been doing this since 1994. I run my own products. I have my own SaaS Studio Web, which is used by many, many, many schools. Over a million students have used Studio Web to date, if not more. And uh, so, people are interested in the point of view of somebody who's been in the game for about 25 years now. I got something to say. When you've been doing something for 25 years, it gives you a, 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 a deep knowledge that you wouldn't have otherwise. All right, good. My car's still there. All right, so uh, I guess that's pretty much it. I hope you like this style of video. Let me know below. If you're a beginner and you want to learn the foundations of coding, I teach Python, JavaScript, I teach PHP, I teach SQL. Of course, I teach two arguably the two most important languages is HTML5 and CSS3 and I'll leave it there.